Hello, I'm Kami Yeshi Rabge, and this is the Buddhism Guide podcast. You can find more podcasts, blogs, videos, and guided meditation practices on the Buddhism Guide app. Download it for free from the Apple Store and Google Play. If you enjoy the Buddhism Guide podcast and would like to support future episodes, you can do so for as little as $2 a month. Visit patreon.com forward slash Buddhism Guide for more information. That's p a t r e o n dot com forward slash Buddhism Guide. This podcast is taken from a book I highly recommend by Stan B. Martin, entitled Illusions on the Path, Buddhist Thought for Modern Times, available now on Amazon and Kindle. This episode is called The Illusion of Permanence. Our inability to face the fundamental truth of our existence the fact of our physical mortality, was identified by the Buddha as one of the greatest causes of unnecessary suffering in our lives. Of course, we all understand to some degree, at least intellectually, the fact that we will die. But this thought is something that we may wish to sweep under the carpet, for fear it might hamper or depress our plans, our dreams, our aspirations, and above all, our pleasures. This fear is so ingrained in us that talk of death is frowned upon by many as a taboo subject. To turn the conversation in the direction of mortality is deemed morbid and ill-mannered. It's certainly not to be found on a list of appropriate topics of conversation to be had at a dinner party in the company of polite society. In light of this cultural bias, it is then interesting that Buddha recommended not only that the thought of our death should be cultivated and meditated upon, but that it should become one of the main motivating forces in our lives. It is not that we are dim-witted and can't accept our own mortality. That's not the problem. The problem is a habitual and harmful belief that deceives us. It's the idea that death will most certainly not come to us today. This has become our modus operandi. This tacit and unconscious belief plays out in our lives and paints a panorama of future plans and dreams ahead of us. It afflicts us with a sense of complacency and lethargy. We act as if we will be here forever. It's as if we are wearing blinkers that obscure this indisputable truth and allows us to mindlessly enjoy the pleasures life has to offer. Of course, the idea that we will all live long, healthy lives is good for business. It's so easy to assume that we will reach the average lifespan of 80 years or so. When we are young, we all think we are immortal. It's only old people who die. It may seem clever to hedge our bets in this way. Then we can just put death out of our minds. When I lived in London and was meditating on the uncertainty of the time of death, I used to walk around cemeteries to read the headstones and contemplate this idea. Seeing flowers next to a small grave of an infant was heart-wrenching. Likewise, descriptions of young men or women dying leaving behind their grieving parents. No age group is immune from the possibility of death. As we get older and start to lose friends and family, this becomes clearer. But what does not seem to weaken amongst most of us is the enduring belief that it won't happen to us, certainly not today. 
millions cling on to this belief right up to the moment of their death. Perhaps this is a reflection of some evolutionary instinct to ignore the most basic fact of life. To fully accept and face the reality that any moment our worldly activities and dreams can come to a final end is of course not good news that is easily digested. But the moment we are born, it is the only certainty that we can lay claim to. The experience we call life will one day come to an abrupt halt. We will lose everything and everyone we hold dear. The more you meditate on this reality, you don't discover some silver lining within this horrific realisation. We don't find some consoling belief that perhaps we really will live forever. We can escape death. It's more that through accepting this truth, by familiarising ourselves with it, by getting used to it, we gain a new perspective on life. We don't necessarily become morose, start wearing black clothes and telling everyone around us about our existential angst. Instead, we slowly realise that the time we have left to live is precious. Like any commodity in the world that is not only scarce but is also decreasing moment by moment, the time we have left is extremely valuable. Every moment counts. To practice living every day as if it could be our last widens our perspective and shifts our priorities. It's not that we should stop planning for the future and instead go on a bender, but rather we become less attached to the plans we make. We become quick to forgive ourselves and those around us for the mistakes we all make. If these could be our last moments together, why argue over trivialities? Why not make this time we have together the best we can? Why don't we try to be the best people we can in the time we have left? I often think that people who are given news from their doctors that they only have months or weeks to live are so fortunate to receive this news. They at least have time to set their lives in order and avoid the shock, fear and regret that often comes with the sudden onset of death. Instead of waiting too late to act and put our own lives in order, why not start today? A life guided by the consciousness of death naturally leads to choices being made that enhance the time we have left and eliminates regret from our life. We can make the best of the precarious situation we find ourselves in. A life lived without regret is a life fully lived. This was an extract from Illusions on the Path, Buddhist Thought for Modern Times, by Stan B. Martin. It's available now on Amazon and Kindle. And until the next time, thank you so much for listening.